How's it going, guys? Good morning. Thanks for the five buckaroos, Carl. Thank you very much. What's going on, guys? Oh. Mmm. A pregnant Lilith Lovey, Lilith, Lilith Lovett plushie. Uh, you know she can't get pregnant, right? Dev isn't late and nah, I'm still late and gay. I'm still late and gay, dude. What's everyone doing? What's going on? It's been a while since I've done this, eh? I'm happy to be back. Honestly, like, the Chaz video took a lot out of me. Then I had some computers break that I had to fix. Then I had house renovations that got canceled because my landlord broke his collarbone. <laughs> and then I decided to make the Aquila video, which was just fucking huge, man. Oh, Max. Max Tepafray. You can uh, check out the DMs in, in, uh, in Discord if you like. So anyway, there was a lot of things that were happening in the past two weeks, so goddamn. I'm here. Oh. Don't become an alcoholic, dude. You're not allowed. Dev skipped the sip twice and now look at Beirut. Is that how is that how it works? Man, the Aquila video, that was a lot. <laughs> it was four and a half hours of recording, then nearly eight hours of editing. And like nothing but that, like no breaks. I took like a small break for lunch and that was it. It was just pure my ass in this chair. That's got to be unhealthy, but I did it. Aquila video huge but very satisfying. Good God, dude! The uh, some of the stuff she's done. There's been quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff that she's done. And actually, you know what? Some stuff that I've, uh, some stuff that's happened, in fact, <laughs> that I probably should have put in. I I only just discovered like this morning. I understand, Carl. I understand, dude. An hour of you French kissing so gonna get the fuck out of here. Dr. Diddler has done nothing but play Ghost of Tsushima for three days. Yeah, Dr. Diddler, I haven't seen you around. Like, I haven't seen you on the Minecraft server too much. I haven't seen you, like, in the Game Boomer stream. You must be just playing that game and nothing else. Yeah, pretty much, Gregor. Like, what happened was Naomi interrupted me saying a line. However, at the same time, I didn't, like, do a retake of the line. I just kept going because I must have forgot. And I didn't feel like re-recording it. So I just I just left it in. Fuck it. Why not? Oh, dude, this coffee's so good. I'm pretty much drinking exclusively kicking horse coffee now. Oh, I might stream Ghost of Tsushima. You guys, would you guys watch if I streamed Ghost of Tsushima on my gaming channel? Because I do have a copy of it. Oh, dude, this is like one of those coffees where like it's still really, really warm, and I'm kind of cold, so it like goes down my throat and like heats up my soul. It's nice. I think Akila deserves a clown horn. Toot, toot that horn. Thanks for the 10 bucks, Lost Boy. I got the horn right here. Hold on. Here it is. 
There it is, guys. You guys would watch that? Yes, 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 sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I can do it tonight if you like. All right, I'll do it tonight. Let me, let me just drop the uh, the link in the channel where I'll show you. Here it is. Go to that Twitch channel tonight. I'll play it there. Yeah. We'll play some more Ghost of Tsushima, because why not? We beat Final Fantasy VII last night. What a garbage fucking game that was. Good God. But yeah. The reason that I stream my game stuff on Twitch is because Twitch, it basically lets people um, give $5 through Amazon Prime. Like, if you, if you get an Amazon Prime account and you get, like, one free $5 donation, it just comes with it that you've already paid for. So some people don't have money, but they have Amazon Prime, so they... They, they give it to me over there. It's not like a regular sub, though. It has to be, like, manually re renewed. Oh, and apparently... Amaz apparently, guys, Amazon Prime is free right now due to coronavirus. So, if you want to just give me a free five bucks... I mentioned this in the video yesterday. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it, dude. I'm not going to show off the server this time, Canuck. I'm going to, in fact, do something different. I'm going to open the packages today. Here, let's let's move on with the with the show, eh? Here we go. So, as I was saying, the five dollar club is like my, my my donator group, you know. Um, Patreon, subscribe, star, YouTube memberships, and the sub button over on my Twitch channel, my Game Boomers channel. Those are four ways in which you can give a recurring five dollar donation. It has to be recurring to enter the five dollar club because basically. That um, it has to be recurring because that's how the bots manage it. There are like bots that run each of those things, and so when it, because it's a cur it's recurring, the bot will automatically bring you in and out of the group if you stop your donation or if you donate. So Patreon, subscribe star, YouTube memberships, Twitch TV slash Game Boomer sub button. Those are four great ways into the ten to the five dollar club. A hundred dollars to my PayPal, you get into the five dollar club for life. So if you plan to be around this community for more than like two years, that's probably the better option. Meet the Galaxy. Thanks for the $5. Aren't you that white nationalist adjacent YouTuber that is friends with Carl Sargon of Akkad Benjamin? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. If you guys want to uh, basically... You have Prime, it sucks. Well, guess what? If you link up your Amazon account with your Twitch account, you can give me $5. It just comes right with it, dude. Oh, and actually, and actually, uh, right now, as an additional bonus, all Twitch Prime subs that are given, oh, sorry, all Twitch subs that are given through money, so not Prime subs, all Twitch subs that are given through money, they're 20% off right now. So if you just want to, like, just donate with money and you want 20% off, but I, I still get the same $5, but it's 20% off for you. So, yeah. Um, Amazon Prime is not the Amazon Prime sub is is not necessarily a one time thing, but as long as you keep buying Amazon Prime, Prime, you still have one sub a month to give out for free. Yeah. Anyway, there's the shilling. There's the whole shell. Here's the second shell. This is the PO box, and we'll be opening packages today for like the community part of this. I, I want to try to do like one community segment every month, whether that's, or sorry, every week, whether that's like having call-ins or opening packages or doing something along those lines, I'll do, I'll do it once. Thanks, Gretchen. Thank you very much. Um, I'll do it once, one, one community thing a week on this show. Um, but right now we're talking about the PO box because I'm going to be, uh, opening packages. So if you guys want to actually, um, send me packages to open on the show, here's where you send them. This PO box, the Walkery Post Office, PO box 21011, Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, P3E6G6. <laughs> Someone came into the server and pinged you, Dev, started asking questions about why you're friends with Sargon. Well, was I asleep? Like, fuck's sakes. Fuck, dude. 
Give me a moment here. Okay. I'm just going to adjust a few things real quick. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. This should work here now. Uh, zip. Yep. I got the, uh, the old, the old potato webcam, like, shoe on head style webcam. Sargon is not, Sargon is not nothing nationalist, no. Oh, yeah. Should we open the packages, guys? That's why I set up the camera. You don't can open the packages. Chinese seeds. Yeah. Okay, dude. Okay, I'm going to move the uh, the keyboard more out of the way. Move the keyboard more out of the way, if you don't mind. It's sliding, though. God damn it. Get off my phone. Ow. Uh, yes, Dr. Diddler. Thanks for the donations, Brick Muppet and Dr. Diddler. And... I don't know about the Chinese seeds. However, the Trudeau's insanely obvious cor corruption and question dodging interview. Yeah, that'll come. That'll come. That will come. Yep. Get a non shoe on head camera, damn it. I bought this camera over 10 years ago, and it's like a 720p camera. I love how just complete shit it is. It's excellent. I, wait, hold on. I have to do like this. There we go. That's how you thumbs up. I, I thought thumbs up. Like, how, how do I show you? Like, I can't really, like, there. It's like this? Well, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, the DK mug is here, guys. I'm I'm drinking coffee to the DK mug. Can't really see it though, cause the DK is facing me. Yeah, I'll hold it this way. There it is, dude. Vosh is a 210 IQ. I don't know about that. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, there's a bunch of shit. I got this, for example. It's just a pack of Velcro wraps. Just to, like, tie up cables and stuff. Hey, Dev, it's Sammer. Hope this is enough, but if not, then use it wisely. Use it well, lol. Some, I mean, I guess someone saw, like, the, the back of my, my cable management and saw how terrible it was. So, yeah, dude. So someone bought me some Velcro wraps. Okay. I'll just put them over here. Okay, what's next? These are my socks. This desk is so goddamn messy. I got this. What the hell is this? It's a box. I think I was gonna open it. A lot of the money we give you, and you'll buy whatever equipment. I do, but I have it runs like shit. The Minecraft server. Thanks, meet the galaxy. The Minecraft server runs just fine. God damn it. Okay, how do I? Go like maybe this side. I'm trying to open this package here, guys. Package got beat up. Oh wow, it got really beat up. There's, there's. St oh my god, it's broken. There's fucking. First of all, now there's styrofoam everywhere in my room. Oh, it, it, I opened the package and just there's like tons of styrofoam pieces. Secondly, this is a statue and it got broken in the mail. Oh my god. It's fucked. Uh, hold on. Maybe I can glue it. There's so many pieces of it, dude. It's so fucked. Hold on. Let me see if I can, like, get the pieces out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What is this? There's a Canadian penny in here. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Okay. 
That's just, oh my god, they're so messy now. Jesus. Look at this. It's a statue of Cthulhu, which is cool. Look at this thing. But it's broken. Look. And the, the back is filled with styrofoam. Like, there's all the pieces of the statue. Just all the pieces. It just died. It just died on the way here. Fucking hell. Dude. And there's so much... God damn it. down here I'm sorry whoever sent this to me I'm sorry dude is the figure in any form do not fucking damage it can customers are fucking idiots <laughs> I'm sorry dude I'm sorry don't think of it as broken dev think of it as a surprise puzzle did Shogoth send this I'm going to try to glue it together again. I'm going to try to glue it together again. Yeah, it turns out that, like, the statue contained the Elder God, and now... And now it's been all released. And now we're all fucked. Oh my god, so many fucking... Ah! Just going everywhere. All this fucking stuffing. Yeah. 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 I delivered the package, boss. Alright, well... The statue itself, like... the If you only look at it from the front, it looks like okay. Nah, kind of the, the head is kind of bulbous on the side and missing. The mind of Cthulhu cannot survive the Canadian Post. Okay, I'll see what I can do with this, though, okay? I'm sorry that it broke. I mean, it's not my fault, but I'm still sorry that it broke. I'm going to try to do what I can, though, to... I don't know. Looks cool. Looks Look at that. That's neat, man. Can I, like, show it this way? Yeah. That looks neat. I'll do what I can to glue it up. I'll see, it, hopefully it'll be fixable. Old man Henderson is free. This is how a horror movie starts? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Let me uh, put this away for now. Bring it over here. So much styrofoam. Fucking. God damn it. Okay. Let's see what else I got back here. Okay, I got like a big ass envelope. Here's the big ass envelope. It's from Amazon, but like it's it came to my post my post office box. So let's open this up. What is this? Somebody bought a copy of this game. Remember me. I've never even heard of this before. What is this? Neo Paris 2084, a world where memories can now be digitized and traded. There are no secrets anymore. One company controls all memory data. Okay. No, man. Like, I've never even heard of this game. It seems like very vaguely familiar, but okay, well, who bought this for me? I can't even tell. It doesn't say. Well, thank you for buying me this game. I appreciate it. I can play it on Game Boomers if you like. If you bought it so I could play it on Game Boomers, we can do that. Here, I'm just gonna like, what is this? Well, this is like a birthday gift from Dom. This is it, it's in my package pile, but it's a birthday gift from 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 Dom. So, no, 
I'm not going to open that on the stream. Uh, what else? What else do I have here? There's so much shit. That's that's a UPS bill. Okay. This is a package that has to be opened. This is a package that has to be opened. Um, this is a package. Hold on. This is a package. Okay, I think that's all of them. I think that's all of them. Because I can't see anymore. Okay. But yeah, thank you for the game. Whoever it was, thank you for the, for the game. You heard of it, but, but forgot all about it? Yeah, it seems honestly like, like it might be a, a, a kind of forgettable game. But still, though, thank you very much. If you want me to play it on Game Boomers, I'll play it on Game Boomers for sure. Yeah, I'll put it over here. Alright, what's next? Okay. Here's a package. I still have the Trump tree Chia pet, but I can't get it to grow. I don't know how to do it. But I still I still have it though. The uh the actual statue of Trump's head sits on my windowsill. What is this shit? This is like organic soap. This is it's, oh, it's very strong smelling. It just filled the room. Oh, <laughs> I can't like breathe near the mic. <laughs> What's in this shit, dude? Like, I thought... I mean, maybe this is, like, a joke about me not not washing or something. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate the organic soap, but, like... Oh, my... Oh! They're so, like... They're not bad smells, but they're so strong. They're so strong, dude. Hold on, hold on. Ingredients. Olive oil, water, organic coconut oil, avocado oil, lye, organic cocoa butter, French red clay, activated bamboo charcoal powder, grapefruit essential oils, organic sweet orange essential oil, and lemon essential oil. Damn. What does this one have in it? Organic coconut oil, water, lye, organic lemon essential oil, French yellow clay, and poppy seeds. These are like different flavors. It's like Northern Lights organic soap, charcoal citrus organic soap, organic lemon poppy seed. <laughs> Doomquare for five. I'm pretty pissed they broke my package after all I went through to get it there. Hope those jackasses broke it. Hopefully you can glue it. I'm really sorry, dude. I'm going to do my best to fix it up, okay? I'm going to flex seal it. The lie will burn the fuck out of you if it ain't done curing. What's this one? Lavender. Olive oil, aqua, organic coconut oil, sunflower oil, lye, castor oil, lavender, essential oil. It's all like... And this is cool, dude. Awesome. Coffee facial scrub bar. Look, there's like coffee grounds in the soap. All right. Neat. What else is in here? We got some 100% uh, or organic lip balm. There's some lip balm. This is orange, lemon, and peppermint. Damn. I mean, thanks, guys. I don't exactly know what to say, but it's cool. Oh, there's a letter, too. Hold on. Let me, let me look at the letter. Let's see. Thanks for all the great content, Game Boomers. Love the cosplay and atmosphere of the channel. Best of luck in your channel growth and personal journeys. 
from Beast Grid. Well, thank you very much, Beast Grid. That's awesome. That's really cool, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've actually kept all the letters that anyone's that ever sent me, so I'm going to put this aside. Garen Ball for 20 bucks. Thank you. My dude tonight's been ex and ex friends with benefits messaging me. It's been five years since sex and both false teeth gives me a bad stuff. Is it possible to find real stuff after evil girls? Of course it is. Of course it is, dude. I did. For sure. You want me to like bite in? You want, you want, me, you want me to bite into the coffee soap? <laughs> I'm going to put this aside. Thank you very much for, for the soap. That's pretty incredible. Each one of those soap bars is seven dollars. Are you fucking kidding? Me? Seven dollars? Jesus! I'm never gonna wash again. Thank you very much, though. I, I really appreciate it. Okay. This okay. This package, I can't even show it to you. It has like. The return address on both sides. What the hell, dude? I have to open it up off screen. Okay. Ten dollars from Jaron Ball. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, what's this? Oh, there's a note that fell out underneath my desk, but it's a book. It's called The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Well, okay. It's a bit bent. That's okay. That's fine. You know, book's a book. I think it's like their used copy of it. That's cool, though. Thanks for the book. Yeah. Anyone read this before? Is it any good? Got paid Friday, so here's some dinner. Oh, one of the dump, scump dumps getting churned out. Um, thanks, Commissar Dale. Or Commissar Dale. Um, haven't had a chance to record a dump recently. Due to all the things that have happened IRL the past two weeks. Okay, let's see what's in the note here. Okay, uh, there's actually some personal stuff in this letter, and I'm probably not going to read it, if you don't mind. Well, I mean, no, I'm going to read it, like, personally, but I'm not going to read it on the stream. It's the, yeah, I think I'm just going to, this, this is one of those, this is one of those emotional letters that YouTubers sometimes get that I've seen, so. But thank you. It's, it's from Logan. Thank you very much. Thank you for the book, and I'll, I'll make sure to read and, and save the letter. Well, put this... Put this aside for now. Uh, what else do we have here? Thanks for the book, dude. Uh, what's next? Okay. This one also... This one also has it on both sides. So I'm just gonna... Get the scissors again. So there's almost, holy fuck, my hands are so fat, the scissors, the scissors got stuck on them. Okay. This is, this is like a picture frame, guys. I, uh, I can't show you what's in this picture frame. Thank you for sending it, but I can't show you what's in it.
However, there is a letter that came with the picture frame. Hey, Dev. Congratulations. One of your subscribers is an amateur diaper fetish artist. I bet you weren't expecting this. Love, Hato Garugan. Yeah. So, I can't show you the picture, else it will uh, it will get me taken off YouTube. I'm not hiding every package, Spear Silver. Okay. Here, I'll describe it, okay? <coughs> I'll describe it. <coughs> God damn it, I'm sneezing. If traps are more reliable and safe to date, does dating them rather than lying them make you less gay? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Okay, so. I'll like, here, I'll inch it towards the camera and cut it off when it gets too close, okay? So, it's an anime woman. Can you see the anime woman? And she's naked. And she's naked, okay? And you can see nipples. And you can see a very soiled diaper. A very soiled diaper. Okay? And it, uh, it is signed by the artist. So, thank you. Thank you for sending me this picture. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> In the chat room. You guys are great. You guys are fucking going wild. <laughs> uh, it's both colors, Zalrot. <laughs> Aren't you glad you became a YouTuber, Dad? <laughs> Post it on Discord. I could post it on Discord here. If I have permission from the original artist, I'll post it on Discord. Okay? Garen Ball for $5. Give definite answer. Are traps gay? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, dude. But that's okay. It's not bad to be gay. So, yeah. Uh, thanks, dude. I think I appreciate it. It's over there. Jesus. All right. Uh, one final... Can I show this one? I can, actually. Yeah. One final package. Advice for next time. Painter's tape if you have it. Great for temp sensors of pics and addresses. Okay. Sounds good, Max. I prefer. Thank you. Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> I got to look at the label as soon as I open this. All right. Check this out, guys. Someone sent me a copy of, come on, Monopoly Socialism. Now there's a game I could play on the stream. <laughs> oh God, that's awesome. And there's a little, oh, that's not a message, it's just, a, just, just an Amazon invoice, okay. So yeah, I can play this game on the stream if you like. A parody of the classic. Winning is for capitalists. I'm going to like open this and see like what's going on in here. I didn't see a super chat from you, Gregor. Sorry. All right. No, there's actually a note. Yeah. Dev, you should play this on a stream from Cicero. Okay. Board games night. Board games night. Bo would you guys want to see a board games night? And would the board games night be better on SFO or on Game Boomers, do you think? Okay, hold on.
Let's open this thing up. Yep, there's the Monopoly money. And there's the rules. Okay. Let's work together to rebuild our community. Socialism is about cooperation. As fellow citizens and community organizers, yes, on boomers, yes, yes, no, game boomers, don't. Board Games Night on Game Boomers, stream it on both. I can't stream it on both because to get money on Twitch, I have to give them exclusivity. Okay, I can do it on uh, Game Boomers. We, we've we done Mario Party Nights on Game Boomers, Spruce Goose. They're really fun. But okay, let's see here. Socialism is about cooperation. As fellow citizens and community... We've, done like, we've actually done, done like five Mario Party Nights over the years. They're, they're a lot of fun. Okay, so anyway. As fellow citizens and community organizers, we pledge to move around the board and revitalize our town by contributing to one of those projects. Unless we can steal projects to get ahead, maintain our vital community fund, unless depleting it helps us win, always act in the best interest of the group. Well, I'll I'll, I'll go look at at the end of the stream, Gregor. I'll go I'll go I'll go check it out. Okay. Um. I always act in the best interest of the group, unless it's more fun to act in our own self interest. Forego competitions and individual glory in the pursuit of socialist utopia. Unless you're the first player to contribute all ten of your chips to projects, then you win. Wow. No one in the no one starts the game with money, so all payments can come out of the community fund until you start receiving a living wage and earning income through your developed projects. It's our shared responsibility to donate to the community fund whenever we can and keep it healthy. Okay. What are the pieces? Nothing special. They're all the old the old pieces. It seems. Let's see the board. Look at the roses. There's like punch out roses, dude. All right, let's unfold this board, guys. Yep, Monopoly Socialism. Dairy free coffee shop. No tip vegan restaurant. The community shuttle. Together We Rise Bakery. Wow. We Love Quinoa Food Co-op. This is fucking great, dude. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's uh, check out some of these chance cards, guys. Hold on. What is Gloomhaven, Gretchen? Okay, chance cards... Let's see. <laughs> you seem to be doing too well for yourself. That's not how socialism works. As a community, choose one player to take back five of their chips. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta do this properly. Hold on a minute. How about this one? If our town can be rehabilitated, then so can you. Get out of jail free. Everyone loves the tofu chip cookies you made in honor of Karl Marx's birthday. Place one of your chips on any open contribution space, excluding your own, and pay $10 to the project manager. Your neighbor forgot their reusable bags, so you help lug their groceries home. <laughs> okay. You keep working despite the circular saw injury. Nine good fingers are all that you need. Everyone loves the quinoa pilaf you brought to community lunch. You bring your own mason jar to the coffee shop for your iced decaf soy lattes. <laughs> These are great, dude. Wow. Okay. All right, dude. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to play this. Fucking hell. All right. That's Monopoly for Socialism. Thank you for sending it, guys. 
if I can actually set up a proper a proper thing on the couch for um, game boomers, I will in fact play this for sure. And that I think is all the packages. So to recap, we have um, socialist monopoly. We have uh, cable twist ties. Remember me on the PS3. The screw tape letters from C.S. Lewis. The organic soaps. The broken Cthulhu statue, which I'll try to fix. And the uh, the diaper fetish artwork. So thank you very much, guys. I just turn off the lights. I think I'm gonna be done with the. Uh, I think I'm done with the uh, with the camera now. There's no more. There's no more, at least so far. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. If you actually want to send stuff that I'll open on this channel, there's the PO box again. Yep. 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 Ah. <sighs> We have Dev standing too far from the microphone. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want you, V, Sargon, and Arsh to play this. I don't know how we do it, though. It seems like it'd be at least different, you know, Canuck? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so who did the diaper art, and do you actually want me to scan it and put it up? Because I'll do that if people actually want to see it. Let me fucking go to the, uh, the super chats if you don't mind. Real quick. Where's the super chats? Monetization. Supers. Because I, I missed somebody's. Yeah, Gregor. Eat soap and wash hands with poop. Naomi told how to. Yeah. Naomi said that during the Last of Us 2 playthrough, dude. It's a Corsair keyboard, actually. We pay you not to. Post the discard. Post the discard. Not done yet, Ethan the Big Elf. Not done yet. We're going to do something else. Um, but yeah. There's the reshill page where I get things set up, as always. I'm going to see if Naomi is up for playing Ghosts of, Sh Ghosts of Tushima, Tsushima on, um, on Game Boomers tonight. If she is, I'll play it. If not, maybe I'll stream some Hollow Knight or something on my own. But yeah, like, there is the Twitch link. If you haven't checked out my uh, my gaming channel, my side channel, my you know my, my side hustle to the side hustle, uh, please consider doing so. Because I put a lot of work into that channel, and I think those people who actually end up checking it out, they they enjoy it. So let's talk about the news because I do have some news links we can probably chat about, eh? So here, give me a second. Here, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Wait, I've lost the chat room. Hold on. Hold on. Ghost of Sushi. Okay, here we go. There it is. All right. So I'm starting off with Aquila Obviously's video because there's actually a part in this that I forgot to put into yesterday's um yesterday's Aquila video. Okay, so check this out. Check this out. This is her. We thought she should win. This is the video that Sargon like took pieces out of, and he got sued for it, and then she lost. She fucking lost. Let's see. And can you hear that? Honestly, it started at like this high, and then just like crept down until for until Trump won. And now the entire uh, the entire House and Senate are twerking on the White House lawn. But okay, okay. I want to skip ahead here. You know how I made a point about basically how Aquila hates where she came from, looks down on everyone who's still there, and basically completely accepts the divide between, like, if you live out in the hinterlands, if you live out in the country, you're a bad person, or you need to escape. One of the two. And, like, how, how real life only happens in the cities. You, you, know, you know that 
that attitude that I, that I kind of showed her having consistently over the years in the video that I made yesterday? Well, there's actually one spot in this video that I missed where she outright says it. Okay? So let me just Anymore. see if I can find it. <laughs> if you read my Twitter, I clearly am done with the niceties. And I don't think that it requires... Yeah, and that's why you're losing $38,000. Requires that we are mean, but I think that we have to be firm and we have to stand our ground and we have to say, you know, I will not accept my neighbor being treated poorly. And so, you know, 2016... Losing an election doesn't mean that you're treated poorly, Akila. It really doesn't. Okay, so that's just... Democracy was true democracy. Hillary Clinton would be president. We have an electoral... The future is better for everyone. So... <sighs> All I can say is good luck to everybody. You know, I think YouTube has been a great four years. It gave people who were hopeful a lot to think about, and it gave them careers. And we saw so much diversity of kinds of people, of people from different places. And it's interesting that we. But Akila, you don't actually like people from different places. You like people from New York. <laughs> God damn it. You know, YouTube had this ascent. During Obama's presidency, it's interesting to see how how people continue through Donald Trump's. So, you know, uh, I think what's helpful for me is I live <laughs> in New York. I'm surrounded by like-minded people. People here are disgusted. Wait, 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 hold on. You know what? What's helpful is that I live in New York. I'm surrounded by like-minded people, and people are disgusted. I thought you just said you like diversity. Surely you'd want to be around people that aren't like-minded, Akila. <laughs> also, you might not you might not want to make the blowjob face. <laughs> anyway, we're not gonna take it. And you if took you it. Are trapped in a place where people think that this is a great decision. We're all here for you. Please escape. Come to New York. Yeah, see that shit. If you're trapped in a place where people actually voted for Donald Trump, please escape to New York. That's how she views this, all right? I, I, this is, it, it's, it, it kind of sucks because, like, I laid out the argument that one of the pillars of Akilah Hughes's um, complete hypocrisy is how she treats people who live in a different type of place than her. And I, this clip, that one sentence is the most, is, is like the most clear cut case of it. And I didn't put it in the video. Like, fucking hell, I, I should have, I should have put it in the video. Yeah, yeah. Come to New York. If you're a good person, you'll make it here. Fuck you, Akila. <laughs> Christ. Oh, yeah. Also, contrast what she said here about YouTube and stuff. Hi, YouTube. It's a contrast what she said there about YouTube to her most recent video, okay? Check this out. Check this out. Hi, YouTube. It's Akila, obviously. And this is a life update. Wow. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Jaron Ball for 10. Thank you. Some sketch comedy web series stuff this summer. So there's stuff coming. But I'm just not. I mean, you know, if you subscribe to this channel, you're like, when does she post? Hardly ever. And my life <laughs> is kind of better for it. I think that YouTube culture <laughs> yeah. got a little vulgar. It literally made me want to vomit. Just to be like completely honest, I think like being an adult woman, there are things that I care a little bit more about than like trolls in the comments of YouTube. If I was doing Okay, so so get this. Get this guys. By the way, look look at look at this fucking ratio here. Christ. Get this guys. As soon as Trump lost, and as soon as she started receiving serious pushback for her shit shit behavior. As soon as she lost her lawsuit, basically she's like, uh, even though I always wanted to be a YouTube, YouTube's just not for me anymore. I'm just doing, I'm doing something else. I'm doing something else here in LA. She's in LA now, by the way. Yeah, she never actually cared about YouTube. YouTube, YouTube was like the stepping stone for her. She didn't give a shit. Commissar Dale for 10. Thank you. Mega metropolitan areas, large cities are a monument to man's hubris. My town of 6,000 has less races than the big cities with their self-segregated communities. True diversity is not caring about skin. Exactly, Commissar, exactly. And actually, I might like adjust this and put this as the first article based on that. 
upward thrusting buildings ejaculating into the sky. Do cities have to be so sexist? <laughs> dude, 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 everything is sexist, remember? Everything is sexist, including the fact that buildings have to be built upward in order to conserve space in a metropolitan area. Good God. Also, do the buildings ejaculate into the sky? Does that... Okay. Toxic masculinity is built into the fabric of our urban spaces, writes Leslie Kern, author of the new book, Feminist City. And the results aren't just divisive, they could be lethal. <laughs> Glass ceilings and phallic towers, mean streets and dark alleys, road names and statues of men... From the physical to the metaphorical, the city is filled with reminders of masculine power. <laughs> like, would you prefer that, like, cities just be built, like, as holes into the ground and people just, like, live, like, deep in the earth? Like, is that what you, you, you like, like, on the inside of, like, these just built craters? You know, that's a lot less structurally sound than a tower, right? Feminists are so sex-starved, they see dicks everywhere. <laughs> Those are bridges? No, it's a 21 cock salute. <laughs> a building, no matter how phallic, is actually misogynist, isn't it? Wait, is it? <laughs> what if it's like a short building? <laughs> surely, surely a skyscraper isn't responsible for sexual harassment, the wage gap, or even the glass ceiling. Whether it has a literal one up top or not. Listen, my city is built in a crater. <laughs> Does this... Are, are we sex, are, are we like a city of sexual harassment too? Remember the old days with it? With, with nudgy religious people looking for dicks and everything? Yeah, dude. Fucking hell. Also, when you're building things on a coast like this, like water, you can't just dig a hole. Like, see all these buildings here? If they just like dug a hole that that height into the earth, it would get filled with fucking water, dude. Anyway. God damn it. To imagine the city and its structures as neutral places where complicated human social interactions are staged is to ignore the simple fact that people built these places. Our cities are patriarchy written in stone, brick, glass, and concrete. Cities reflect the norms of the societies that build them, and sexism is a deep-rooted norm. Fuck me, dude. What is sexist about just a city? You can't just say this shit. All right? Okay. The office tower is one more addition to the procession of phallic monuments in history. Poles, obelisks, spires, columns, and watchtowers where architects unironically use the language of base, shaft, and tip while drawing upward, thrusting buildings, ejaculating light into the night sky. <laughs> you know, it's only in, like, hentai when semen, like, glows with light, okay? It's not in real life. <laughs> okay, also, okay, people build giant towers, not because they're phallic, not because it's a symbol of masculinity. It's a symbol, in my opinion, of the of, of human desire to fly. You know, um, humans have always looked at birds and wondered what it would be like. Flying has always been a, sim a symbol of uh, of freedom, and I think just humans reaching for the sky has has never been about sex at all. It's always been about flight. And I think that is where the modern skyscraper comes from. It's it's about like reaching just beyond our means, and there's there's something like noble about that. Five dollars from Garen Ball. Thank you. As a guy dating black girls, I get no abuse, but man, my friend gets awful abuse. I honestly don't get it. Can you guys explain it? I don't know what you mean necessarily, but I mean if you're if you're dating black girls, isn't that all? Isn't that awesome? Wait, are you white? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, I guess, but surely you'd get some approval of dating a black girl if you were white from the um from from Dem SJWs. 
man wants to fuck the scars. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Because rocket ships are phallic. I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> Make her realize her fingers are phallic. Yeah, dude. It turns out that, like, you should never eat bread again because a loaf of bread is a phallic symbol. You should only eat donuts because they're holes. All right. If the sexism of the city began... The sexism of the city... Fuck me. If the sexism of the city began and ended with architectural symbolism, I would have happily written a grad school essay about this and then turned my attention more pressing matters. So... Basically, you admit that, like, your degree is fucking worthless. All right. Society is historical and ongoing ideas about the proper gender roles for men and women are built right into the cities. They still matter. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, all right. Ask any woman who's tried to bring a pram onto a bus, breastfeed in a park, or go for a jog at night. She intuitively understands that the message the city sends for her, this place is not for you. Well, um, bringing a pram on a bus is just annoying to other people around you. Just like it would be if, like, I brought a giant package onto the bus. Like, like my bike, all right? If I brought my bike onto a bus, that's also considered to be annoying. It's not about it's not about your fucking femininity. If we build towers worshipping the phallus, why didn't the Greeks build towers worshipping bussy? Thanks, Commissar Dale. Thanks for the five. Crazy Loon, first time catching the morning sip live. Thanks for being here, man. Garen Ball, I'm white, doesn't I don't get abuse, but she does. Like being with me is evil. That's bullshit, man. Beat the shit out of those guys. Well, anyway. Like the pram thing is stupid. That's not that's not a feminine thing. Breastfeed in a park. If people actually give you shit for breastfeeding in a park, I think it's kinda dumb, you know. I don't know where what about you guys, but here it's actually legal for anyone to go topless. It's legal. It's as in it's allowed for anyone to go topless, so fuck it, whatever. Um go for a jog at night. Uh Again, guys who go for a jog at night, they also feel this. I've been, like, outside at 1 a.m., and I've seen, like, someone kind of weird, like a, like a block behind me, and I've been like, uh-oh. I felt that. I don't, I don't want get, to get the shit kicked out of me, dude. It's it's strange, because these people really want everyone to, to move to cities and live the city life, and yet they're like, cities are, cities are hostile. A pram is like a stroller. It's a British word for a stroller. The anonymity of urban life breeds possibilities easily stifled in a claustrophobic small town or suburban enclave. Education, work, pleasure, politics, the city broadens our horizons to give us choices our foremothers never had. I mean, yeah, fair enough. So what are you complaining about? The Greeks did celebrate the poon. Look at the Colosseum. <laughs> Thanks, Kenick. Thank you. So, in any case, there is basic. This is just like the history of cities, and it's all bullshit. This whole thing's like bullshit, dude. Good God, like... <laughs> there's, just, there's so much bullshit. Even Frederick Engels feared that women working outside the home was too... Fuck, fuck, fuck off with Frederick Engels. He can, he can go suck a dick. Ah, God damn it. In any case, they're talking about work. Talk... <laughs> <laughs> here's the best thing about this building guys it's the building of the people's daily newspaper in beijing so maybe the problem isn't a western one you fucking hypocrites i guarantee you the guardian has simped for for china for fucking sure wait i bet that like this author has simped for china leslie kern leslie kern let's see who the fuck is Leslie Kern? I kind of want to see. An associate professor of geography and environment and director of women's and gender studies at Mount Allison University. She is the author of Sex and the Revitalized City. Okay, yeah, whatever. But what did she have to say about China? Here she is. I found her on Twitter. Let's find a stupid take. From Lely K, China. Oh, nothing. Holy fuck. Okay. Maybe she's not one of those always online types.
Oh, good for her. Yeah, she's not really... She, okay, we found, like, the one. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Let's fuck this. Oh. You guys want to play this game? Validate. This is, a, this is an indie game. Struggling singles in your area. Validate is a visual novel in which you maneuver yourself through the twisting paths of young adulthood. Set in the Jersey City area, 12 struggling singles in their 20s navigate through the trying ordeals of capitalism to find meaning in their lives. Includes a hint of love, cosplay, and even mediocre mixtapes mix tapes in the mix. With 12 playable characters and over 30 routes to choose from, there will be about 20 to 30 hours of content, depending on how you play it. We don't know if you'll be reading fast or not. Whether your decisions are good, bad, or just dependency shitty, you can have a great time falling in or out of love with these characters. Oh, shit, dude. I should play this game on the fucking channel. It sounds fucking terrible. <laughs> Crazy Loon for $2. You're the Guardian. Communism, good. Also, Angle's problematic. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Cast. Meet the cast. Oh! Imhari Abdi. She, her, and he, him. This person's an HR specialist. Lesbians, lesbians at, born after 1984 can't cook. All they do is eat ramen, buy seven Redding Wings, eat hot chip, and cry. Okay. I'm from the Jersey area. Please play. It's my people. Okay, meet the galaxy. Oh, Yolanda Cerise. She, her. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's like these mixtures here, eh? She's, like, French and also South Korean and black. All right. Ari Cooper. He, him. Okay. Claims romance is dead, yearns anyway. She's, he, he's a marriage counselor. Okay. Hairstylist. Alonzo Davids. He, him. Personal trainer. Okay. Uh, your angle and your devil, dad of the year. Rocky Harrison, from China and the States. Still riding the high of winning the 6th grade spelling bee. That's literally Aquila, obviously. Alright. Ashley Colum. She, her. Professional gamer. I think this person's trans. Like the wider shoulders, you know? Calling people slurs on the internet isn't very gamer of you. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> saying poggers to numb the pain Isabel Morgan alright dude the theater teacher actually looks like a theater teacher that I had in high school Anoki Otil Anoki Ohetika all the pronouns all the pronouns is also a female dwarf Cosplaying a kin is just wearing your everyday outfit. Oh god, fuck white people. Urban planner and a professional cosplayer. Malik Patterson. He him. Manager at Bob Eyes. That's a trash ass mixtape. This is wow. What the fuck is this? I feel like I'm looking at a fucking, like, space creature here. W Country girls make do. <laughs> Jesus. It seems, like, it seems like you've been making do a bit too much for the past 15 years. Captivating like a comet. Easy to forget. <laughs> She's an editor at GH Magazine. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> I want to play this game. I want to fucking play this game. It's so stupid. An asshole made into a full human. <laughs> Looks like something Lady Gaga would wear 10 years ago. But on somebody who's like four times the size of Lady Gaga. It's the pagan fertility goddess. <laughs> okay. Anaya Saifi. All right. She and they. She and they as like a pin on your 
Overalls. Okay. The original croissant dropper, stem blogger, during the height of 2014 Bumbler. They say blocking is the best way to win an argument. <laughs> She's a food scientist. Okay. Biggs Smallson. Good bussy, apparently. This guy looks like good bussy to you. <laughs> That's it. Hold on. There was exactly one white person here, and she's trans. <laughs> here, here is your cast of datables, guys. Which one do you want? Which one do you want to fuck? <laughs> yeah, the people who, who this game is made for, they'll enjoy it, and good for them. You know, they make their money, they make their money. But holy fuck, is this hilarious. <laughs> I kind of want to play it. <laughs> memes. Are there memes? Oh. I believe in female supremacy. But you're... I think you're a guy. Wait, this is just like... This is... This is just... You posting your own characters in memes. Uh, don't touch me or my daughter's beanie babies ever again. Okay, what's the press kit? Details, features, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Here's what the game looks like. Date select. This honestly really seems like, okay. Oh, no, no, see, I, I, I agree, like, add more black... Add more, like, cute black girls to dating sims, all right? But the key word there is cute. Was oh, there a video of the game playing? Validate. Struggling sync. Wait. That was just the logo. <laughs> that was just the logo fading in. There is no reason any of these people would be struggling singles. No reason. No reason at all. Isn't it apparent how the snowflakes had an apparent serious overflow? Now they're the joke. <laughs> Thanks, Kenick. Mr. Grimm for 1,000 CLPs. The nationalities don't make sense at all. No, they don't. Like, they don't fucking look like anything they're supposed to. Like, you go to... We'll, we'll go back to the cast, all right? And it's like... First of all, I don't get most of these flags. But, like, there's no way this person is French and South Korean. All right? Like, fuck, fuck me. Chinese and American? Okay, sure. Like, they just... They just stuck random-ass flags... On the fucking thing. Alright, who are the devs of this? Oh, meet the team! And there's Danny. There's Percy. There's Alexis. And there's Kevin. They're like... They're kind of like... I like how these are normal people. Okay, here. You know what you do? You take these normal-ass developers, all these normal people... And just make them in the game. Make these the characters in the game, and you'll be fine. Like, okay, you have some weird stuff, right? You have some weird stuff, okay? You have, like, a girl with a little goatee. Okay, all right, fine. You have, like... Hold on, I saw another one. You have, like... Like this person here. You know, looks like a girl, has a beard. Okay, fine. But, like, the, this art style is infinitely more adorable and more endearing. And the characters are, like, more normal. More, representa more like, representative of reality... And, like, they look more interesting to me. Even the weird ones look more interesting. Like, is this deliberately over the top? Or... Hold on. Kickstarter. Who the fuck gave 57... <sighs> like... Are you fucking kidding me? Is this all I had to do to get, like, rich? 
That's all I had to do to get rich, guys, is just make a shitty game like this. Okay, well, there's, there's a demo. A demo is available, so maybe I should play it. Maybe I should play it, guys. Do you guys want me to play this on Game Boomers? You guys want me to play this game on Game Boomers? So I'll fucking play it. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Okay. Good God. Let's, let's, let's continue on here. Let's continue on. BL on the dating sim. Yeah. Horoscopes on every character and dev profile. Yeah, well, it's a culture now, so... Yes, Dev. Fund your Game Boomer show. Do we have to? This is Soros funded. Everyone wants to see you made shit. Okay. Sell your soul to the woke crowd. No, 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 no. Force Dave to play it. No, no. I want to play it just to see how bad it is. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Like, here, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Here, let's go back to the cast for a minute, Okay. I don't begrudge anyone in real life who actually looks like this. Like, if this is how you want to present to the world, if this is the person, the kind of person that you want to be, then fine, go ahead, all right? Like, it's it's your it's your life, it's your body, it's your property, you do whatever the fuck you want, okay? But it's not in any way discriminatory of me to say that most people, most people aren't this, all right? <laughs> and so to have, like, in an extended group of friends and acquaintances and like people that you know from work and whatever in this extended group you might have like one person in the group who looks like this all right in your extended friend group not the entire group okay so and anyway, let's keep going let's keep going what's this oh yeah a michigan teen who was on probation was incarcerated for not doing her, her schoolwork a 15-year-old high school student from Birmingham, Michigan, has been detained since May at a juvenile detention facility for failure to submit any schoolwork and getting up for school. A judge ruled this was in violation of her, her probation, which was related to prior assault and theft charges. So, when this happened, guys, people were, like, losing their fucking minds. Like, it's a black girl. She's 15 years old. She was arrested and put in jail because she wouldn't hand in her homework. It's so crazy, dude. Then you actually look at it. You actually look at the event and check out. It doesn't make any sense, says the girl's mother. Fuck off. Okay. Check this out. Check this out. Okay. She was incarcerated in May for violating her probation by not completing her online coursework when her school in Beverly Hills switched to remote learning. Okay. So that sounds kind of crazy, right? It does sound kind of crazy. But as you scroll through here, let me see if I can find it. Come on. Come on, where's the... No, there's like a... Okay, fine. I don't care what your fucking life story, dude. Here we go. Okay. The incident that led to her current situation happened on November 6th, where someone called the police after hearing Carice crying, help me, and honking her car's horn. Okay. So apparently what happened... Yeah. Um, Grace upset she couldn't go to a friend's house. Grace upset that she couldn't go to... Grace is the, is the child, by the way. She was... And, and Charisse is the mother. Grace was upset that she couldn't go to her friend's house. She had reached inside the car to try and get her mother's phone and had bitten her mother's finger and pulled her hair. Police released Grace to a family friend who let the, cool to cool, the two cool down and referred her case to Oakland County Court, where an assault charge was filed against her. Weeks later, she picked up another charge for larceny after she was caught on surveillance video stealing another student's cell phone from a school locker room. So she attacks her mom. She steals. Okay. Yeah, I felt instant remorse and guilt. I want to take back everything I, I had done. Yeah, I'm sure you did. You, you, cause, cause you, yeah, after I was caught, I felt the guilt. Not before. Not fucking before, dude. <clears throat> okay. So she she has this history, right? Okay. And then she they participated in therapy. Grace stayed out of trouble. However, she, she was still on probation from these other fucking crimes. And part of the probation, you see, the hearing on, on the larceny and assault charges were connected via Zoom since the court has shut down. Everyone called in from her homes. Okay. It was awkwardness. Fine, fine, fine. But you know, throughout the hearing, I, I, I want to find the, uh, the sentencing here. 
<clears throat> okay. The terms of her probation after the larceny and assault included a GPS tether, regular check-ins of the court worker, counseling, no phone, and the use of a school laptop for educational purposes only. Grace was also required to do her schoolwork. So she commits two crimes. She gets sentenced for those two crimes. Part of the reason why... <clears throat> Part of the reason why she doesn't get the fucking book thrown at her is because they say, okay, here, here's your probation. Make sure to do your schoolwork. You know, stay, stay on the straight and narrow. Or else ne next time, the third crime, you get to go to jail. And so she decided to blow off school, went to jail. So, like, Twitter was outraged because it, 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 just, it just sounds like black girl goes to jail for not completing her homework. Sounds ridiculous. Turns out, turns out, she had multiple chances, and she blew it. So it's like, fuck, dude. At some point, you have to like give up the pity and be like, man, like you did this to yourself. Good morning, Cole Cole. Christ. All she had to do was finish her homework. That was, that, was, that was her probation. Finish her homework, and she didn't do it, so she went to jail. You're fucking dumb. All right. Politician and businessman Herman Cain has died at 74. F's in the chat, guys. I know back in 2012, I kept saying that Herman Cain's got to go back to the back of the train, but didn't actually mean it. It was a joke. It was a meme. R.I.P. Herman Cain. He was cool, man. Like, I like I don't know how, how many of you are actually old enough to remember the 2012 elections, but... Watching the debates with Herman Cain and them, he was like a, he was fucking awesome. He had like, his tax plan was called 999, where basically he said that like all taxes would just be reduced to 9%, no, no matter who you are. Doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, you will always pay 9% taxes. That was his plan. But he lost to Mitt Romney because he, he was an outsider, so. Yep. So apparently uh, Herman Cain got, he, he caught coronavirus and he died. RIP. He had trouble breathing, was taken to the hospital by the ambulance. We all prayed that the, the, the initial meds they gave him would get him to bring him back to normal, but it became clear pretty quickly he was in for a battle. Hospitalized for coronavirus. Five days ago, doctors were hoping he would recover, but the recovery would not be quick. He, ne he never actually reached the recovery stage. He just died. He was higher risk due to his age and previous battle with cancer. RIP. Herman Cain was awesome. He was like the pizza guy, dude. He was the pizza guy. Yeah. We are sorry for announcing he was tested positive for COVID-19. and He's currently receiving treatment. Rip. Most people heard of Herman for the first time when he ran for president in 2011. They didn't know his business background. Yeah, he, he was the CEO of Godfather's Pizza. Like, that was that's what he was known for. Yeah. R.I.P. Yep. I don't think there's any way to trace this to one specific contact that caused him to be infected. We'll never know. Yeah. It's almost like this This disease is now endemic and it's never going away. We should probably just deal, fucking deal with it and get back to normal. All right. What's next? Some scenes in Deadly Premonition 2 to be rewritten after being sanity checked by a team that included diversity. Okay, so those of you who don't know, the Daily Permission, amazing game in, in my top 10 games of all time, Daily Permission, all right? It stars this guy who goes to a small town in Washington state to solve a murder. He's an FBI agent and he's just kind of strange. He's like very autistic, you know, he's very blunt. He, uh, he shits on people all the time without ever knowing it and meaning no harm at all. He just doesn't know what he's saying. He's just like... He just says things directly and doesn't understand why people like react strangely. He just doesn't doesn't get it, right? He's he's completely oblivious. He's very autistic, okay? So what happened is that uh some characters in the game are transgender. Some characters in the game are disgusted by them and use the wrong pronouns and names they had before transitioning. This is condemned by most of the other characters, though they do not act to prevent or openly condemn it. Main character Francis York Morgan openly condemns this, focusing on a person's a person's actions being more important than who they are. And that's exactly what Francis York Morgan, this guy, would think. 
However, what ends up happening is like, despite this, York dead names a trans woman in the game out of complete ignorance, which is exactly what his character would do. That is exactly how his character would operate. He doesn't, he wouldn't understand. He wouldn't get it because he's, 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 he's an autist basically. And even though it was completely in character for him, uh, the trans lobby got so fucking angry that the developer updated the game and rewrote the scene. It's bullshit, man. Bring up it for five dollars. Kane saves both Burger King and Papa John's. His impromptu debate with Clinton changes the American political landscape. Well, thanks very much, Brick. Um, did he debate Clinton though? But yeah, dude, I love Daily Permission One. This sucks. Like, come on, man. Yeah, see. I might have hurt transgender people in my scenario. No, you didn't. You you didn't. People are just fucking too sensitive. It's so dumb, man. I'm 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 angry. I don't like this. Like the point of of York uh dead naming this trans woman in the game is that he legitimately doesn't know. He doesn't understand why it's bad. That's why it's fine for him to do it. It makes sense in the context, in the lore of the game. But they changed it. Because it was too offensive, I guess. Fucking hell. And yeah, it, it is it is it is obviously ableist. Yeah. Anyway. Occupy City Hall. Encampment taken down in pre-dawn raid by New York Police Department. If this sounds like it comes from 2011, it doesn't. This came from uh, like last week. Officers in riot gear cleared the makeshift camp in City Hall Park, which began as a protest against police abuses, but then turned into a gathering of homeless people. So, protest immediately turns into a homeless homeless site. Okay. All right. So, they cleared out the Occupy City Hall protest encampment in City Hall Park, shutting down a month-long demonstration against police brutality that recently had attracted numerous homeless people. That is how it happens, isn't it? Kind of like how the homeless people stole all the food from Chaz. NYPD riot police have driven City Hall occupants, at least half of whom have no other housing options. Tents and signs have been trashed. Rip. As police moved through the camp, officers took down a series of tra- tarps and makeshift tents that demonstrators and several homeless people had been living in and tossed them into city garbage trucks. It's like, shit, man. Can we just go into your, into your neighborhood, your high-class neighborhood, and just shit it up? Just because it's high-class and we're not. Yeah, look, look at this park. You like you like looking at it? We're, we're just going to live in it and just shit all over the place. And we, we have to drag you down to our level because that's equality, right? It's not that people are too sensitive. They want control. Yeah, that's true too, Crazy Lynn. That's true. But thank you for the $2. Thank you. Twitter still dogpiled him afterwards. Does confusion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, swear he needs to learn never to fucking give in, dude. Yep, so anyway, they cleared it all out. Look at this. Look at this noble protest. It's literally like a squatter's camp. Well, 100 100 officers descended on the park, told them they were breaking the law, ordered them to leave, most people dispersed, and then a small group watched the operation. A few protesters said the police had had told them they would be able to return to the park to retrieve their belongings. When they went back, everything, their water, clothing, and personal effects had been tossed into sanitation trucks. Like, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, there are more productive things to do with your time than to just sit in your own feces in a park. I understand if you're homeless. I understand. It's a different situation. If you're homeless, I understand. But, like, if you're a protester, maybe you could, like, go to school for an actual, you know, for a job that needs doing and not just feminist dance therapy. Right? And then maybe you can get, like, a... You could, like, actually make some money. You know, you could, you could work hard, be honest, make some money. You know, get yourself a home. Maybe, like, forge a relationship. You know, there are things you can do that are worthwhile that aren't just shitting up everything. Christ. Okay, so. You guys hear about this? L is real. 2404. You're telling me that Luigi being in Mario 64 was finally solved 24 years and one month after Mario 64's release, when the whole myth of Mario, Luigi and Mario 64 was tied to these exact numbers, 2401, and then if you get, add those numbers, you get July 25th, today's date? Dude, Luigi's 
Luigi was in Mario 64 after all. You guys heard about this, right? Hold on. You guys heard about this, right? It was confirmed like 25 years later that Luigi was actually in Mario 64. Like, legit. They finally found him. He looks kind of like this. He, he like, his model's in the game. He just wasn't playable. They just... <laughs> so, yeah. Dude. I always knew I was right in the, in the, in the schoolyard. I always knew I was right. Yeah. No, it, 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 was, it was discovered last month in, like, the big Nintendo source code uh, leak that Luigi was always in Mario 64. He was always in there. They, they just found him, like, last month. It's real. I'm not, I'm not trolling you guys. It's real. Seriously. Anyway. What was this? Oh, yes. Soon-to-be groom left freaked out by fiancé's family's wedding ritual. Okay. A man who is due to marry his girlfriend has been left freaked out after being told about a wedding night ritual his partner's family expected him to take part in. He explains his fiancé has a huge extended family who are very warm and caring, and he gets on really well with them. The couple, both 23, have planned the ceremony for early next year. <clears throat> but with the arrangements getting underway, he, the man said he has noticed his girlfriend's cousins making jokes about their wedding night, which he found weird. As they brainstormed possible honeymoon destinations, his fiancé revealed that they wouldn't need a bridal suite at the hotel where the wedding's taking place. She would like them to stay at her parents' house instead, which he has no problem with, as they are currently trying to save money to put down a house deposit. But sensing that his partner was holding something back, he questioned why she was pushing the idea and said that her family has a really old wedding night tradition. The husband and wife go into the master bedroom together, and they are supposed to consummate the marriage. The rest of the family are waiting outside the door so they can applaud them and cheer when they come out. Then a piece of the bedsheet is cut off, and sewn into a big tapestry my girlfriend's mother owns. Seeing how uncomfortable he was with the ritual, she said they could simply pretend to get it over and done with, but he continued, I don't want anything to do with this. I absolutely freaked out and told her under no circumstances will I be doing that kind of thing in front of her whole family. I think she's been, she's been texting her family about this, because I received a text from her mother telling me that I don't understand the importance of family and tradition, and this kind of tradition has been around longer than I've been alive. <laughs> and sure. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you guys want like the family sex black, the family sex blanket? I wouldn't fucking do that. Fuck that, dude. That's pretty creepy, dude. I don't. I do not want to be banging someone while the family like listens in outside. What the fuck is that? I don't care how fucking old of a tradition it is. I wouldn't do it. Fuck. That's. Oh my god. No, thank you. No, thank you. Sounds like an an, an aristocratic thing. Oh no, happy Canuck. I do, I do not want my girlfriend's family listening to me fucking. No. Nope. No, 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 Okay, you know what? You know what? If this, if I was like marrying into like old money, like billions of dollars, I'd probably just fucking do it just just for the money. But like, no, no. If it were, no. No, if it were like as a regular family, I'd be like, nope, no. Yeah, the thing's supposed to cheer them on. Fuck, dude, fuck me. Good God. All right. Okay. An Amazon driver praised for following young son's hilarious delivery instructions. Okay. Here it is. Wait. It's supposed to be this video, but it's not the right video. No, I don't care about weekly COVID. Okay, here it is. Play. Check this out. Play it. Play it. Fuck. Play it. Wow, it's just not going to work. It worked last time I was here. Okay, fuck you, whatever. Anyway, point is, um, 
Mum Lynn Staferi was left baffled when she witnessed an Amazon delivery driver sprint away from her home and footage recorded. Oh, now it's working. See? Amazon package delivery person leaves it, knocks, and then runs the fuck away. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so her her young son had snuck a very unique set of delivery instructions onto the Amazon order. Yep. The son had written, knock three, no additional instructions, but knock on the door three times and scream abracadabra as loud as you can and run super fast away. <laughs> so that's what happened. Okay. All right, dude. Who's sending me these fucking links for this show? These are like... I mean, yeah, that that was the story. <laughs> that was the story. Some kid pranked his mom by, like, ringing the doorbell, screaming abracadabra and running. All right. Okay. MSNBC plays a KFC ad on accident for a black man during a racism segment. We need to fucking watch this, dude. Oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm ready. Okay. As you know, Hillary Clinton says that Trump's campaign is appealing to a fringe in the Republican Party that is racist. I want to listen to part of her speech with you and then get your reaction. So here it is. Sure. I am the extra crispy girl. <laughs> and my extra crispy $5 fill-up is a tasty... Oh, yeah. Absolutely not. We were going to... <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, Are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's good. That's good. Oh my god. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Okay. CNN's Van Jones reportedly helped craft Trump's police reform order in secret. Oh, fuck, dude. CNN, CNN rebellion going on here. CNN political commentator Van Jones, who, commanded, who, who commended President Trump's recent executive order on police reform, had actually attended secret White House meetings to craft the new measure. Jones, 51, who hosts the Van Jones show on CNN, enthusiastically... <laughs> enthusiastic supported Trump on the network for his order to create a system of tracking police misconduct, ban most chokeholds, and incentivize offer tra officer training in the aftermath of George Floyd's killing. He lauded the president even as the executive order was slammed as cynical and unproductive by the NAACP and described as delusional by the color of change, by, co by color of change, a group that Jones himself co-founded 15 years ago. So yeah. Jones had joined his new pal, Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law and advisor, in the White House to discuss ways to frame the order on police reform. Okay. Jones said uh, on CNN's Inside Politics, The executive order is a good thing, mainly because you saw the support of law enforcement there. There is movement in the direction of a database for bad cops. We've never had a federal database for bad cops. That's why all these cops go all over the place doing bad stuff. The chokeholds, it's common ground now between Nancy Pelosi and Trump. Good stuff there. He later told host Anderson Cooper that the executive order was pushing in the right direction. So basically, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Al Sharpen com complained, saying that the order was toothless and meaningless. Nancy Pelosi complained. So blah, blah, blah. But here, 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 okay? So, Van Jones, I've, he, he's, he's pretty lefty, okay? I've seen some of his stuff on CNN. He's pretty lefty. He works for CNN, which is a very left-leaning, a left-leaning publication, or like an outlet. Okay, okay, fine. Van Jones outright says, here, where is it? There's common ground now between Nancy Pelosi and Trump. Van Jones is basically working with Trump to try and push him more towards what the people at CNN would want. All right. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's like a synthesis there, you know, where Van Jones get, gets pulled a little bit more right. Trump gets pulled just a little bit more left. Like, like not too much, obviously, like, like, like maybe like only a few centimeters. But the point is, is that he is going to Trump and saying, OK, we'll work together, even though we're very different politically. 
We'll work together. You get some of what you want. I get some of what I want. They, 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 they cut deals. They compromise, okay? And that is enough to make the rest of the lefty establishment fucking go after him, even though he's been very lefty for a long time. Okay? It's like... You would think that if 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 the left could influence Trump enough to hypothetically make Trump a lefty, they still wouldn't do it because it's it's less about getting their own political their their own, their own political um, agenda completed and more about holding on to power, having someone to hate, and just um, you know remaining stagnant and just saying they're going to do things but taking money. It's it's ridiculous, you know, like. If Trump gave the left everything the left wants, they would still hate him because they need someone to hate. It's as simple as that. So this guy, for daring to, like, cut a deal or try to influence Trump and not just isolate him and, and like, screech into an echo chamber, he's, he's now being dragged. Fucking ridiculous, dude. China confirms case of bubonic plague in Inner Mongolia. Thanks, China. Thanks, China. China has confirmed one case of bubonic plague in northern provinces in Mongolia. Okay. The patient is now under treatment at a hospital and is in a stable condition. It's a three-level alert, warning of the risk of human-to-human infection, and urging citizens to report dead animals, suspected plague cases, and patients running a fever for unidentified reasons. Bubonic plague, also called the Black Death, killed 50 million people in a 14th century outbreak in Europe and 12 million people in the 19th century. It is now the most common type of plague. <sighs> Gone dead Mongolians. China did it again. China fucking did it again, dude. I swear to God. Yeah, the plague's pretty treatable nowadays. But Christ, China, come on. An 80-year-old man shot on a Lomira golf course by a man firing at a woodchuck on his property. Okay. The sheriff officials say that the bullet was... Okay. An 80-year-old man was shot while golfing at the golf club at Camelot on State Highway 67 <laughs> after a man fired a woodchuck. The bullet was fired by a 50-year-old Lomera man ricocheted off some trees. Some trees. So several trees then. Striking the golfer who suffered injuries that were not life-threatening. He was taken to the hospital. He was treated to be released. All right. When shooting firearms, it is always very important to know your target and beyond. Firearms are capable of shooting long distances. How far away was it? Oh, it doesn't even say. Okay. Just someone, like, much further away shot into the bush. It bounced off trees and hit somebody golfing. Wow. That's some bad fucking luck. Okay. Um, is it Florida? I don't know. Is Lomira in Florida? It's Dodge County. No, in Milwaukee. Okay. Genetic non-discrimination law is constitutional, Canada Supreme Court says. For the good of the world health, he must nuke China. Holy fuck, crazy loon. Thanks, dude. Thanks for the donations. Thanks, everyone, for all the donations, guys. It's been pretty incredible. The Caddyshack reboot is metal. All right. In a split decision, the Supreme Court of Canada has upheld a federal law that forbids companies to make people undergo genetic testing before buying insurance or other services. The Genetic Non-Discrimination Act also outlaws the practice of requiring the disclosure of existing genetic test results as a condition for obtaining such services or entering into a contract. The act is intended to ensure that Canadians can take genetic tests to help identify health risks without fear that the results will pose a disadvantage in seeking life or health insurance. I kind of see this, right? Like... Discriminating based on genetics seems to be very similar to discriminating based on race. Unless you don't believe that race and genetics have a connection, like some of the far lefties do, but I do believe there's a connection there, so... Yeah. The, the law should treat you equally, and then just let your behavior play out. In a 5-4 decision, they said that the, the measures are a valid exercise of Parliament's power over the criminal law. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, there's not much here. It's just the fact that it was upheld. It's probably a pretty good act, too, I think. Yep. Penalties for violating the provisions include a fine of $1 million and five years in prison. 
The Quebec government referred the law to a provincial court of appeal, which ruled in 2018 that it stayed beyond, it stayed beyond the, the federal court's constitutional power over criminal law, but then the Canadian National Court, Supreme Court, shot, shot that down. Okay. Choices about genetic testing are deeply personal in nature, and the reasons for making them vary wildly from one individual to another. Just as one individual may wish to be aware of every possible predisposition or risk that a genetic test might, might reveal, another may prefer not to know. And the individual who wants them to know may not want others to know. The act protects those choices. Yeah. Genetics can actually show chance, cancer chance as well. Yeah. I have not seen that, Neon Reagan. DM it to me. DM it to me on Discord. Yep. So it seems to be a privacy thing, which I think is important. You know, right, right to privacy is an important right. No, throw the godly. What it, what, what it means is it means that like a company can't, like an insurance company can't demand you, you take a genetic test. Like so that, so that, so that they can uh, turn around and say, okay, well, we think you have a higher than average risk to catch this disease. So we're not going to insure you like shit like that. Right. Club of reason. DM, DM that to me. I want to see it. DM it to me, please. On, on discord. And the final article for today, Minnesota Starbucks barista allegedly wrote ISIS on a Muslim woman's drink. <laughs> well, was her name actually ISIS? Like, <laughs> okay. A Muslim teenager has said she was left feeling humiliated after a Starbucks barista allegedly wrote ISIS on her coffee cup. Yeah. Aisha from Minneapolis, St. Paul was visiting the Starbucks store inside a Target store in St. Paul with her friend on July 1st when the incident occurred. The 19 year old said... Before she even finished telling the employee her name, they began to write something on the cup and hide it from view. When she was handed her cup, the teenager said she was in shock to find Isis written on place of her name. That's fucking hilarious. It's ridiculous, dude. It's hilarious. She was wearing her hijab at the time she placed the order, which clearly identified her as a Muslim, as a Muslim woman. The word that was written on the drink is a word that shatters the Muslim reputation all around the world. Yes, it does. For good reason, dude. When she asked the barista about it, they reportedly said she didn't hear her name correctly. I, Aisha said the manager then backed the employee up, calling the incident a mistake. Yeah, like, think about it. Aisha. Could you actually somehow, like, hear the name Aisha and hear Isis instead? Anyway. Aisha is now being represented by the Minnesota chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, which filed the charge to the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. <laughs> the manager told the teenager, what's the issue? People get names wrong all the time. That's true. Anyway, she got a replacement drink and $25 gift, gift card. Like, if they got your name wrong, like, okay, if it's actually them being dicks, yet you have a case, fine. But if they just got your name wrong, like, fuck. And you're not going to be able to prove it. You're not going to be able to prove it. You will not be able to prove this. They will say, sorry, we heard you wrong, made a mistake, we gave you the stuff, here you go. Like, through a mask, maybe? Yeah, like, through a mask, yeah. Aisha. Maybe. My name is Aisha. I don't fucking know. Anyway. Like, what would they do if they actually met a person whose name was Isis? <laughs> Yeah. This is not a simple mistake. No one puts, you know, the KKK on the cup of somebody's drink. Hold on. Hold on a minute. KKK is a group of white people who are racist against non-whites. ISIS is, an, is a group of Islamists who are like I Islam supremacists. Okay. If someone... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. So when random ass white people are called white supremacists, that's racist then, right? It, surely it is. Because if random ass Muslim people are called ISIS and that's racist, then surely just calling random white people white supremacists, it'd be racist in the, for the same reason. It's like, I'm not like that. You know, I'm not like, like, like a Muslim person saying I'm not like ISIS is completely reasonable. And to simply assume that they are the worst of 
of what Islam has to offer, that would be that would be at least some kind of discriminatory. But surely doing the same thing to white people, like with KKK, makes sense, right? Fucking hell. Knew a girl in high school named Isis. A white girl sucks about her name. Yeah, dude, that sucks, dude. That fucking sucks. Damn. It's, yeah, it's like being called a white supremacist is a racist act for the same reason that calling a random Muslim person ISIS is is uh, a bigoted act. It's the same thing. Like fucking hell, man. Okay, that was it. That was it for, for the articles for today. Um, as always, I did the unboxing earlier in the stream. If you want me to unbox more of your ridiculous shit, you may send it to this P.O. box. If you want to financially support the channel, a recurring $5 donation through Patreon, Subscribestar, the YouTube memberships button, or the sub button on my twitch.tv slash gaming channel, the bots will pick that up and put you into the $5 club in Discord. Um, if you want to be in the $5 club for life, $100 to PayPal. That'll do. That'll do it. I'm going to stream tonight. I think I'm going to try to stream Ghosts of Tsushima tonight on Game Boomers. So drop by. It, what, what time is it right now? It's 12.30. So drop by in like six hours, okay? H-E-T-P-S colon slash slash twitch dot TV slash Game Boomers. Drop by tonight, okay? I'm going to play Ghosts of Tsushima. Maybe I'll play something else. But I don't know. I'm going to stream tonight. I'm going to stream tonight. Um... Drop in if you, if you haven't if you haven't watched Game Boomers before, please consider checking it out. I put a lot of work into that show, and we have a lot of fun there. So I'll play a video game tonight. Come by 7 p.m. EST. Um, yeah, about six hours from now, and I'll see you then. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks for all the donations. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for the packages. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow for I'll see you tonight for the stream and tomorrow for a new video. Um, that's about it. I love you. Have a good day. <laughs>